Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox the Wi-Fi 6 router from Speedify and it is model KX450. This is AX1800 dual band gigabit Wi-Fi router. Now I have to mention that this is 1.5 gigahertz quad core processor. That's why I can bring that type of internet on the table. We have already tested this. I am very amused using this router. I do not want to forget if you haven't subscribe to our channel click to click the subscribe button make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon select all in order to get notified once we have a new video out on top of that if you have a question drop them at the bottom of the video we love to help you out asap and don't forget to click to click the like button it really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time all right you can see that the box is very nicely designed it has speedify on one side it says Wi-Fi 6 with that real little X inside of it in the another side you have a huge icon at the bottom says that it is AX 1800 Wi-Fi 6 router. It is running 1.5 gigahertz of quad core processor. The model number is there too. It says KX450. On one side of it you have specifications. And then package content is right underneath of it and then more support. Now when you go to the back it has way more information that you really need. Once we slowly open the box, and we take everything out one by one, here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this register page, which has the URL there, and then once you open it, also shows you exactly where you can get the app from, and if you need more help, where you're going to be able to ask. It also comes with this quick start guide and you can see the model numbers written right at the bottom of it. And once you open it, it's a huge page and it has a lot of information inside of it that we will try to cover most of them on this video. As usual, it always comes with an RJ45 or Ethernet cable. And here you go, this is the power adapter. It is 12 volt, 1.5 amp, and it is created for Canada, United States. It's about a meter long, and it, this part will be connecting to the actual router, and this is how it looks. In the big moment, the router itself, it is inside of a little plastic, so it doesn't get scratched up once you're getting it, and it looks really slick. I really like that little design. It is made out of plastic, but you can see the name is written really nicely on the top. It has that little pyramid, little design, a little cut to it. And yes, it looks really slick. There is a little LED indicator right in the front. And you do have big antennas. You can see that there's four of them, which really stands out. All right, so let's go through around and cover what's involved. I really like this design, the way that they have placed everything together with a name on the top. Also, you have the little LED light. Once you turn it on, this will be blinking. Going on the front part of it, there's nothing there. But once you go to the side, you have these little holes for ventilation. You have the big antenna. And then going in the back part, there's nothing here. But when you go to the back, you have another antenna. Then you have the DC connection, which is 12 volt, 1.5 amp. You do have the little reset hole. And then you have the WPS button. You have one internet cable that will go in that called WAN. Also, you have four ports. There's one that is called IPTV and number three. They always keep number three for IPTV. We will capture that if you request on another video. These are all gigabit port. And then you also have this antenna going on the other side of it. There's nothing there. But once you go to the other side, you do have some little holes for ventilation. And there is a big antenna connected, except that goes back to the front. Now, when you flip it upside down, you do have little legs like these ones. So that way when you put it on the floor or on the ground, it really stands up. But you can see that you can move it easily. It's why? Because this is also have little parts. You can put screws on the wall and then you can hook this up. And it's very easy to mount. By the way, if you guys do need it, do ask. We do have some little tutorial for that, but we did not put it up yet. There's a lot of holes for ventilation and you can see through them. There is a little sticker that will give you all the other information that you really need, except that this is how it really looks. Let's go ahead and connect it. So we have to connect the internet wire first and then the power. And here you go, once it turns on, this will blink a few times because there's nothing connected or there's no connection to it. And then you have to set it up. All right, so now let's go through and connect to router and set it up. 
And then from that, we have to find our Wi-Fi. I have two names. One is this one and one is this one. So I will be selecting the 5G network. And now when you press home and you want to bring up your browser, we have to go to that IP address 192.168.3.1. Press enter. So this is very first time that we need to set this up. So there is a little part that says to start. We will click on it and then it will tell us to set up the dynamic IP. So we'll click on next. And it says that you need to enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you enter your password, then at the bottom of it, it will tell you that you need to put up another password. Once you enter your password, you have to press next and then you can go to it and it is all set up. Now you will be able to see there's two of them as one is this one and one is this one. So let's go to this and connect to it. Now it says to enter the password. So that is the number that is in the bottom of your router that you set up. So I haven't changed it yet. So let's go through and enter it again. And once you're connected, it will give you all the information. So now let's go back. We're going to go back to our browser and we will just refresh. And now you can see that on the screen, it tells us that we need to put the password. Now that's the password that you set up when you're first time going in. That's not your default password unless you wrote down the same thing twice. But once you go in, this is what you will see. Now, one thing I've done is I went through the browser. There is an app for it. So let's go and get that. Once you go to your app store, or in this case, I have the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which is Android. Once you go to your Google Play Store, you can go to search and then you can search for speedy Wi-Fi and it will be the first one on the list. So select it and then you can install it. The where mine says open is you're going to see install. So click on it takes roughly about 30 seconds for you to install. And once you do it, once you go to it, as it's installed, then you can go through and set it up. So right now I am not connected. So it says to take control now. So I will click on it. And then the password that you set up, you need to go in. And there you go. So right now it looks like I'm the only person connected to this. So this is perfect. So now let's go through some tools and show you exactly how it looks. So in the bottom right now, let's go to tools. Inside of tools, you have a lot of options. It's starting from internet information, and then you do have the Wi-Fi name and password. So you can change this to anything you wish. And also you can just click on this. And then this way you will be able to rename it. As usual, we always changing it to our own name. And then for the password, we're going to change it to something we could remember. And then same thing we're going to do with this, the 5G part of it. We're going to delete and also just renamed the password. Once it's all done, we're going to say save on the top. And now it just saves. It will kick us out from the internet. You can see that it says failed. So it didn't allow me to save it. So you will be disconnected from Wi-Fi and then we can reconnect to it. So there you go. Mine is right over here. This is one and this is the second one that we created. So we're going to go to the 5G network and we're going to connect to it. Now it takes a couple of seconds for you to connect and it should be a lot faster than the other internets that you have. So once it's totally done, now we are connected as 5G. So now when we go to the actual app, there you go. And now when you look at it, you can also reboot. And then when you look down, you have internet settings. You can log in your password. You can blacklist people and more. Let's show all of this functions when we connect it to the computer. For now, let's go through and do some testing. So first thing first, we have 5G network. So we will launch our speed test. And here you go. Let's do our first test. Now this is the Wi-Fi 6 and we are connected as a gigabit. And let's see, this is type of number we're getting from Wi-Fi, not from LAN connection. And this is on the phone itself. We are not very near to the router itself when we are testing this. So this looks really promising. Now, when we go to our upload rate, remember we have a gigabit, it's up to gigabit and our upload rate is 32 megabits per second. And you can see that we exceed it. Now, remember that this is one test. Let's do it one more time on 5G network to see exactly what type of numbers we're getting. And here we go again. This is uh, Wi-Fi 6 really kicking it when it comes to the Wi-Fi. I'm giggling because this is a phenomenal number. I am just going to replace my main router with this because this is awesome. 
this is giving me the speeds I'm really looking for as a Wi-Fi. So 742 for my download and 32.8 for my upload. Now this is one part. Let's get out of this and let's reconnect this as a 2.4 and let's see what type of numbers we're getting out of that and there you go now it's connected connected so we will flip back into our speed test and let's click one more time to see what type of numbers we're getting remember that the 2.4 network it is exceeding the numbers it's 94 96 97 99 you see that so it is roughly about that number it's even exceeding that number that's beautiful so this is a really good router for me right now to play with. This is on 2.4, so this is not mesh network. And once we connect it to the PC, we will capture and show you even more. This is one time test. Let's do it one more time on the phone so that way we can tell that this is awesome. For now, I really enjoy having this or playing with this router. This is something cool. I never thought that I can get this type of numbers. 107 on 2.4 network and now we're testing it on the upload in my upload rate is 32 but it looks like it just kept it on 25.2 i am very amused this is beautiful the numbers that they are giving me is awesome on this all right enough said about the phone let's flip it and take it to the pc all right so here is the pc part so we need to go to that ip address that they provided which is 192.168 and it is .3. Dot one. Press enter and it will ask you to enter your password. So once you go in, this is the main screen that you will see. The beautiful part is that all the settings are on your left hand side. You have the main part that will tell you exactly what type of internet you have. Now this is not the speed test. This is when you use your connections, then these numbers will fluctuate. It will go up and down. Do not mix this with your speed test because you can click on it but nothing can happen. So this is not a speed test. And then going down, you have the router. It's just one connection right now to the internet. And then it will tell you that you're connected as 2.4G and also as 5G. And here are your SSID or your Wi-Fi names that you're connected. Two devices connected right now. You can click on it and it will tell you that my laptop, which I'm capturing this right now, and also my phone is connected to this. My phone is connected as 2.4 and my laptop is connected as wired because we need to test this with wired to see exactly how good this is that's not the only thing if you go on a side you have internet settings you can click on it this is where you will be able to set up your connection and yes we are connected via lan connection and then that is for the internet that comes in and then going under wi-fi settings this is what you can select and then you can connect to it there's a lot of settings in this even transmit powers, WPS is enabled right now, and OFDMA is there, and then the access point. Right now it is disabled because we're using this as an actual router and not access point. Going under guest network, I have not set it up. Yes, you can set it up, and this will really help you for your guests that when they come into your house, how long you can select, and also how much of internet you want to give them as per megabyte. That's not the only thing. If you do have Airbnb, this is going to be very, very useful or even control their speed. Another part is parental control. You can go here and then you can change your duration for your kids. So this way they can come on and get out on certain times. This will really help you out. On top of that, if you want to set up a VPN, it doesn't matter which of these protocols, you can click on it and you can set it up. Another best part is IP version 6. Advanced settings is really cool too. You have your bandwidth control. You can click on it. And then that way you can tell how much of internet they can use. And you can throttle them. And also your IPTV is right here. So if you are using STB or using multicast, you can set it up. So this way it just going to use the proper protocol for your IPTV. Since I don't have it, I do not have to worry about that part. And then you have the speedy Wi-Fi app. You can enable or disable it. So this way you have access to your Wi-Fi on your phone or tablet. LED control is really cool too. I left it always on or you can schedule it. So on top of your router, you have that little LED will really help you out. Filter Mac is really cool. If you are gaming, this will be very useful. And also firewall, always leave all of them on because you do not want any cyber attacks to your router that will defend it. And then you can static router, you can set up 
one of them to be your static router and DDNS is there, port, forwarding is really cool for your gaming, beside your firewall and also filter Mac. And you also have the DMZ hosting and UPnP is there. So going under system settings, you have a lot of things that are set up there. I do not have to even explain most of them because you can see it. The one that I really like is something like backup and restore. You can backup your full settings once you all set it up and you put your parental control in everything. You can back it up just in case of something do go wrong with your router or you have to exchange your router or you get a newer one. You can restore it and you do not have to set each of them one by one. This way it's done in nanoseconds. Going under firmware upgrade, you can click on it. And then if there is one, it will tell you and it will give you a little link that you can click and download. If you want to load it locally, you can go to their website, get the file and then load it from here. Click on upgrade and it will take a few seconds and you will be up and running. Your status is really cool too. You can click on it and it will give you if something is wrong, it will tell you right outside. It says mine says good. Now, official website, you can click on it and it will take you to Speedify so you can get more information about different routers that they have. You can also click on contact and it will take you to their website for their help and support. All right, enough said about this. Let's go through and test it out to see exactly what type of numbers we're getting when we are LAN connected to this router. Now, we are already connected to Speedtest. So let's click on it for the very first time and see what type of numbers we're going to get once we are using the LAN connection. Remember, Wi-Fi was very good, but LAN connection should be even better because this is a gigabit LAN and it should get you to the gigabit connection. Only thing is, it depends when we are connected and how many people are connected to our network. For the meantime, we have a ton of people connected and we're just testing it out right now. So my download rate for the first time is 684. Dot six five, which is roughly about same numbers that we got from Wi-Fi, which is perfect. But our upload rate is exceeding, which is 32.5. Now we go in for one more time to see exactly what type of numbers we're going to get this time. And you can see that it is just running up and it is exceeding 500. There you go. We go into 600 and then 700. There you go. Now it is showing that we are connected as a gigabit, which is perfect. So again, gigabit goes roughly about 860 and we're roughly about 760.88, which is a really good number again. Now we're just waiting for the upload to happen. There you go. Now it is exceeding the upload. So it looks promising. I really like this router. And I would suggest everybody to purchase one of these. It is inexpensive. Links are available in the bottom where you can order it from. Except that I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button. Subscribe button on the top comment on the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is xctex.info. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.